have some of us have. <laughs> but don't go disturbing it. All right, let's call it to order. Um, I am the uh, temporary pro tem for a uh, chair, because the council specter is out of town. Out of the country. Uh, out of, yes. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you leave the city. You leave. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care where you are. Uh, so uh, this seems to be audio recorded. This, this, uh, this show, this meeting will be audio recorded by Council Clerk and video recorded by one or two uh, other entities. So, um, watch what you say. We have approval of the minutes September 3rd, 2013. Move to approve. Okay, I can hear a second. Second. Any discussion on those minutes? Okay, so, question of procedure. Do we want to approve just a new portion? What do we have? Because, uh, don't make up a majority of the head loop plus the ad hoc. Or do we just want to do any, anyone want to ring it on? I don't know. Mary? Uh, we should approve them all? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Move to approve, move to approve them oh, in toto. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Uh, do we have any public comment today? Okay, so we have two orders that are um, coming out of the mayor's office, and he's, the mayor has asked for a co-sponsorship. Um, let's, uh, let's first recognize the mayor and the economic development uh, director. Uh, can I get a motion for both? Uh, yes, I'm very well Opportunity, and I'm going to turn it over to Terry uh, to, to get into the meat of it, but I wanted to just, by way of introduction, um, I have two um, separate orders, although they're obviously related because they relate to the same um, economic development project in the city, and that is the construction of the new Fairfield Inn and Suites Hotel, which is located on Conn Street. You'll see it in construction right now uh, next to the Daily Hampshire Gazette. Um, and uh, I'm actually... Um, want to bring forward to the City Council. We've received requests from the, uh, the hotel uh, owner slash developer, um, who you may also know as Mansour Galabov, who is also, who's the current owner of the Hotel Northampton, um, who is uh, developing this new property. And so the two things that I'm uh, proposing to bring forward to the City Council are a um, designation uh, of, this, of this project as a certified project within the Con Street Economic Opportunity Area, which was actually established several years ago uh, when the Gazette expansion happened, as well as a tax increment financing plan, or a TIF. Um, and, uh, and, and then the other item that we're bringing forward, um, again related to the same property, is an order seeking special legislation uh, uh, from the general court to allow the issuance of an all-alcohol uh, hotel license over quota. We have innkeeper on there, but we've made a slight correction to it um, to use the correct terminology. Uh, uh, and so I believe we'll be able to correct that to make it uh, read appropriately um, uh, to the Fairfield Inn and Suites on Conn Street. So before we get into it, I'm going to have turn over to Terry Masterson just to talk about the actual project it, itself and, uh, and the real economic uh, impacts that it will have for the city. Terry? Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm happy to have a chance to come and talk a little bit about what the Fairfield Inn. I think it is very unique to talk about it. It's not um, just a hotel because the fact that it's being built in downtown is very, very exciting because it's going to be another 108 rooms, 108 rooms positioned in downtown next to the Hotel Northampton, which has 106 rooms and the Quality Inn, which has 88 rooms, which would put nearly 300 room 
students from into downtown, walkable distance to downtown, um, and we bring shoppers and tourists and visitors here. Um, and I will give you some numbers in a couple of seconds. Um, coincidentally, or parallel on a parallel level, the county is undertaking a countywide tourism effort. There's a lot of effort going on to um, do what they call regional tourism, and tourism has become a higher priority for the state as well. So for us to be able to increase the number of hotel rooms that we have, I think positions as well to hopefully benefit from that. Um, the hotel, as I mentioned before, would have 108 rooms, would have a market value of about $8 million to $9 million towards the city's tax base. And I think that's also very exciting. It would employ about 10 to 12 people, which is also worth noting. Um, I wrote that the construction of the inn is a very positive and exciting development because the creation of 100 new hotel rooms along the existing 88 rooms would place 200 rooms in our downtown, and if you've added in the 106 rooms from the Hotel Northampton, you get to 294, as I had mentioned. Add to the fact that the market value of the hotel would be in the range of about nine to $11 million. The city currently has about 350 hotel rooms, and this would bring us up to about 457 rooms, which is also um, worth noting. Um, it should be noted to be objective that the hotel market for Hampshire County has been at about 55% occupancy since 2007. It's ranged from 55 to 53 to 52, while the state average has always been at about 65% overall through the course of the year. Most hoteliers look for a 70% occupancy rate to build a new hotel, so I think we really want to do what we can to support this, because we really do have somewhat of a weak um, hotel market. The fact that we can centralize the rooms into downtown is an economic asset I think we really want to leverage. Um, in that regard. Just coincident, just as another parallel fact for the month of July, which is probably a peak season month, the occupancy rate for um, our, our county is about 55%. Let me get that correct. I apologize here. I'm sorry. The, the occupancy rate for us now is 65% for the month of July. It's average is 55, but peak season it goes up to about 65%. And to give you a comparative figure, Greater Boston hotel market, which is probably one of the more prime markets in the entire country, is at 86 percent, and they are in, they are experiencing a lot of new hotel construction. One of the interesting calculations I did, and I could do a lot of them, you could really come up with some good economic numbers, is that you assume 294 hotel rooms at just a 50 percent occupancy, a very conservative estimate, that could generate over 52,000 hotel rooms annually assuming single occupancy, which is also extremely conservative, and if they spent $65 a day, they would be spending over $3.5 million in downtown Northampton. Um, a fair measurement would be 1.5 guests per room, but I'm just using 1. Point guests per room. So $3.5 million is certainly a very good number to add to the, the dollars that are spent in, in downtown Northampton. Estimated tax revenues from a hotel such as this I estimate that if, if the hotel were valued at eight and a half million dollars, assuming a fourteen dollar and forty two cent tax rate, which um, is the current one, that would pay about one hundred and twenty two thousand dollars a year in property taxes at full value. The occupancy tax, uh, which is six percent, I'm assuming at, for just the Fairfield Inn at eighteen thousand room nights, which, is, which again is a fifty percent occupancy rate. Uh, at an $80 room rate, which is also very low, um, would gain the city $84,000 a year um, for the hotel occupancy tax. And the meals tax revenue would be 18,000 guests um, at $50 a day, would come out to about a $6,000 a year contribution to that stream. So the total impact of the hotel would be $212,000 a year in property tax, and tax revenues for the city. So it's, to me, um, it's a unique asset that the city should cultivate to the, to the, to the extent that the market will bear it. Um, and I think the attractiveness of Northampton is clearly inducing people to make that investment. We recently worked with another partnership that's very seriously looked at another site in the city for a smaller 45-room hotel, and they felt very confident that there was a market to address that as well. Um, so those are... 
10 to 12 for the hotel. Um, but I, 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 as I said, I won't, I won't blabber on. I can come up with lots of more numbers because there may be a, the possibility of, of another hotel remodeling or re-upgrading, and that would also you know, help add to that. Um, but for me, for the years going forward, hotel rooms close to or near downtown is a definite economic asset to take advantage of. We don't want to have the market, we don't want to permit more than the market will bear, so I've made a real point of trying to give you what the hotel market looks like. But um, the more rooms drives more visitors and drives more spending in downtown as well as tax revenue for the city. In terms of the actual tip itself, as you saw in the materials that we sent you, um, we're proposing a five-year tip, uh, and we are proposing the way that the tip would be spread out over the five years. Um, in the first year, uh, it would be a 50% um, uh, uh, reduction. Um, in years one and two, it would be a 25%, and then in years three, uh, excuse me, in years uh, four and five, it would be a 5%. Um, this is actually, uh, coincidentally, uh, the same TIF package that we uh, gave to the Daily Hampshire Gazette um, when it did its uh, major expansion on, well, at the time it was the same property uh, because the hotel is being built on that <coughs> property. Uh, this was in 2005 when the new uh, press building was built adjacent to the former existing building. Uh, so. Uh, what Mr. Golubov has indicated is that really the short term, the, the upfront nature of the TIF is most important because that's when it's going to be most uh, capital intensive. There'll be in construction. Um, there'll be a little bit of a lag time to start generating cash flow on the property, um, and so um, that's the that's the rationale for doing a, a shorter uh, but more intense, as opposed to when I came before you recently for the tax increment financing plan for the assisted living, they were looking for a much longer time span um, of 15 years, and we had a, a, a healthy debate about that. Um, so for those who are concerned about the longer term, this is a much shorter term. Um, and again, I believe in terms of what this, would le what this helps to leverage, um, in terms of the, the hotel motel tax, uh, as well as just the other benefits of providing uh, Capturing guests that may now be staying in Hadley or maybe staying in Springfield or be staying other places during peak times when we don't have the, the sufficient number of hotel rooms. Um, so, and again, I would also stress that this is a local, uh, this is a local business, a local investor uh, who has a long track record um, in the community in terms of the investments that he's made in the hotel in Northampton. Uh, so it's a, a known commodity in terms of uh, a local existing local business who's. Um, expanding in Northampton. He had tried for years to try to expand on the site and adjacent to the site. Um, uh, and so now this is what he's attempting to do. So, uh, and then uh, I don't know if you want to separate the two questions. Um, the, the other item is uh, as with the Hotel Northampton, um, he has a liquor, um, an all alcohol um, license at the Hotel Northampton. Uh, to be able to serve alcohol to guests. Um, he's not proposing to do something on the same size as what's at the Hotel Northampton, because obviously it's a much smaller hotel, as you can see from the rendering. Um, but he is seeking, he, he has asked whether uh, the city would pursue a all-alcohol hotel license um, uh, for them, uh, which requires us to go to the legislature for that, because we are at our quota for all-alcohol licenses overall in the city. So that requires um, a special act, an, an order calling for a special act that we then, uh, ask, I asked for the city council support of, and then we send it to the legislature for their consideration. So those are the two items uh, that he's requested. I believe there's letters that, uh, from him um, regarding the two items. If not, we can provide them. But the, the, uh, what you outlined in your oratory is for the tip, the tip. Is that exactly what is written here? Uh, and you talked about year one, and they talked about year two. This should get 50% for both for years one and two. Okay. Um, I may have it. I may have. Uh, hmm. But I 
you just say 60% the first year? 50, 50, 25, 5, 5 yeah. is what the business is. Yeah. But you did, I think you might have said 50, okay. 25, 25, 5, 5, and then maybe corrected yourself, but I'm not sure which. Yeah. Do we uh, have his, his request? I've got the, what do you have? Do you have what, the they, what you have in the order okay. is, is what it is. Okay. Yeah, that, that's the tip that the kids had got. 50, 50, okay. 25, yes. 5, yes. Okay. Yeah. okay, fine. Yeah. So I, I, I misspoke, I apologize. I'm trying to read off a small screen. So oh. on this screen I was reading off when I was reciting that. <laughs> We haven't got the teleprompter in, but we do have the automatic video okay. Okay. camera now. Okay. Um, so if it's a, if it's one hundred and sixty two thousand dollars, one hundred forty two thousand, excuse me. So what are we giving him for a break in the first year, dollars and cents? You've done those calculations. Well, at fifty percent would be half of one hundred twenty two. So sixty thousand, then sixty thousand, and then on and on and on. And the, one difference, the one difference I would add with this, with this type of a project, which is different from other projects, is yeah. that it also generates an additional tax, which is the hotel motel tax, right, right. which would be an additional eighty thousand a year, right. conservatively. Um, so in terms of the, the yeah, how well, it's, yeah. And it's already started. They're already. You're correct. They're building. And he's been in. He has been uh, in discussions with us for some time about this. Um, well as the, the all alcohol license. Um, and so he's now at a point where he's obviously beginning to ramp up construction more. And so this would help him in terms of his financing plan. So was the, the tip was under discussion prior to construction? Uh, I would say it's not formal. He sent us, we, we've had discussions about it, uh, and then he sent us a formal letter um, asking for for it, which is what the state requires. And that was last month, I think. Last month he sent us a formal, the first step in the process under the state's process, because this also has to go through the state's um, program as well for certification. So he sent us a letter, uh, and, uh, and then we in turn forwarded it to the state, um, and they began their process and analysis, and then I have, under the local process here, I, the mayor has always come to the Edlu committee to seek their co-sponsorship of it. And so it, what's always nice to know is how much do they save at the other at the state level? Um, do we have do we have a figure on that? Uh, I don't believe. I know it's always substantially more yeah. than what they were. I don't believe they finished. I, I, I'm not sure. Have they finished processing the um, whether or not he's going to have access to any state tax credits? No, they haven't finished. I don't think he will be. I've discussed it with the state. Yeah. Okay. So he, he may in fact not be eligible. We, may, we have to go through some um, bureaucratic process to file the tip with the state, but I, I could be, you know, as we finish talking with Mike Fedevelli, but right now I have not heard that he would be eligible. Yeah. There's a lot of times the tip, part of the conversation that we have is how much is he going to save on the other end of the yes. state level? Yeah. And so do you provide the tip at the city level? And what if it's not approved mm -hmm. at the state level? Do I we still give him the tip at the city level? I believe it's a, I think they've tried to, um, manufacturing has become the real focus for those state tax credits. Um, so some of our tips have had that aspect. Um, others have been just local only tips, um, like the one that was done up at Village Hill yep. for Christopher Heights. Um, and I, I'm, I'm gonna have to check on the Gazette one because I'm not sure if that was also local only or not. Um, yeah, that, there was some state. Yeah. Uh, Money in that too. Yeah, I'm, I'm not for or against. I'm just no, no, no. I just think it's a fair question. Where it's coming from? Yeah, it's a fair question. We have to, again, it just got into the pipe, state pipeline. So yeah. they're doing their process. We're doing their <laughs> process, but we can certainly find that out for um, before this would uh, come before the council. Thank you, Councilor So, so it's fair to say. Is it fair to say that the Continuation of this project does not hinge on this tip. That, that, that he, I just I just want to know the, the parameters of the negotiation that he's broken ground. He's building, most definitely. And yeah. He's moving forward. Yeah. Most definitely. So there's sort of like uh, what I'm gathering in our world, in our community, and world at large that there's this unspoken. I mean, now it's been spoken, but there's a, a little bit of a there's a good faith. Ex 
expectation. Is it fair to say that this is what's done, so this is, you know, this is, he expects this. I mean, I, I, I know you, I'm not asking you to go into his brain, even though it's just sound like I did, but I'm just sort of trying to get a read on how we operate. Um, it's interesting because we have other projects who very expressly don't pursue this and don't ask about it, and and we have one other developer that we are dealing with quite extensively who said quite clearly this doesn't want to do that, um, and it's not it's not anything it's nothing against the city. It's just not something that they're it's part of their uh, financing. Plan. He doesn't need the tip, you mean? That's what I'm not, I'm not talking about this other, developer. Right, I'm talking about other developers that we've dealt with. Um, and so, but this is obviously someone who's, uh, you know, a local entity um, and uh, has obviously seen other local businesses go through expansion projects and, and knows about this program. And so, right. so he's doing his, right, whether it's doing State Street job. Fruit right. Store or the Daily Hampshire Gazette or, you know, other, you know, obviously the Daily Hampshire Gazette was, you know, on, on the adjacent property. So, and other, and other businesses in, in the city, Cole Morgan, et cetera. So, um, so he knows about the program probably through that. Right. And, and right. so, and again, I, I, I am, uh, I'm very pleased that with the, the the investment that they're making. So I'm trying to assist them however I can. Ultimately, it's the council's decision um, whether or not to uh, to grant it. But I guess I, I guess I'm just I I it, it bums me out put in very non policy level terms. Mm -hmm. um, that um, we're so desperate for revenue, this is such an advance in economic development, and that the quid pro quo for the advance is that we give back what we desperately need. Well, we're not, I, think I mean, half of, I mean, I get what, I get, I, I mean, I'm doing conceptual. I know we're not giving back entirely. We're, I get the breakdown. But, but we're, not losing we're, any, we're not losing any revenue. We leave no revenue on the table. The way a TIF works is um, just like if someone gets a, an exemption from property tax, they're that fifty. They don't pay that fifty percent, um, but it's that it's still part of the overall levy, and it gets and it gets spread out across the whole uh, city, the whole tax base. So we're not losing. We're not losing that tax revenue. Um, so it's it's part of the. Um, um, well, if, I could, if, I could, if I could say. Um, there's so much of an upfront cost in the construction of a hotel. He has to put all his money into this project right away, equity or debt financing. Um, and this is really not, this is not like a five year or a 10 year. Where I come from in New York State, I don't think there's ever going to be a hotel in the last 10 years that was built that didn't get very lucrative property tax exemptions to get the hotel in the ground. Buffalo, Syracuse. The city of Philadelphia has a 10 year abatement on any office building or hotel that's built in the city, because tourism in Philadelphia is like through the roof. Um, so for this, this is, it's giving him something, it's a part of a, a, an appreciation, a, a, a partnership, it's a respect of the financial fact that he has to put all his money up front into the ground, get that building up and running before he even sees a guest. And then a year from now, he'll start. Well, I understand. No, no, I know you do. No, no, I just, yeah. yeah, if I've explained too much, tell me off. No, no, I mean, I understand. This is a good thing. This is a good, yeah. I, I don't need to be convinced it's a good thing and that he's, you know, and that we want to be good partners. And so I'm just trying to understand, you know, the parameters of what equals a good partner. And and I guess I, I apologize for not being as, um, for not understanding fully. What you're saying is that the tax levy is still the tax levy. But that, and that other people are going to be paying the difference by virtue of being spread out. But that this, the, we're, we're, the city itself is not losing a dollar in tax revenue. It's just that other people are paying for the. It's the exact same thing that happens with other exemptions that we have in the city, whether it's for people that are seniors or low income or any yeah, other of that. those exemptions. Um, uh, that's the way that it works. So. Um, well, that's a big learning for me. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I just had. So we are just giving him a break, but the city is losing nothing. That's correct in terms of the in terms of the overall tax revenue that we have collect. But that's correct. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Did, was there my is that my is that I was explaining that? Or yes, I was. I was. I'm, I was making my under the breath comment that the, it depends on how you define the city. And the, you say the city is losing nothing. 
yeah, everyone else pays a little bit more than tax. You're right, but the pot, very, the very city small. revenue pot, yeah, is not spread around all the other properties and the rest of the multi-million dollar levy. So, okay, anyway. thank you. Did I hear a comment? Well, just to, given how two and a half works, the, that of course once the the taxable base rises, then that's the amount of tax that the uh, the city can assess. For protecting right. somebody or many somebodies, by definition, everybody else picks up. And the other thing I have to really right. say, uh, and I said this before with the, with the um, you know, with the assisted living project, is um, it's been a field for however many years, and it's not generating any tax revenue now, uh, or significant tax revenue, and so. Um, this project is going to expand the tax base. I mean, it's going to expand the tax base. Um, so, yes, we're giving a break, but the tax base is expanding, at, at, you know, by the amount of this, the value of this new property, right. and we're essentially abating 50% of it for the, the early part construction phase of the process. But right. without the project, it's a field that's generating very little. Um, economic taxes or economic activity, jobs, tourism, etc. So those are some okay. of the issues. Yeah, yes. Appreciate it. Thank you. When this kind of thing was set up initially, and I don't mean here and generally speaking, it was to encourage people to do things. It was to encourage them mm -hmm. to do it. But he already has decided to do it. He's doing it. Mm -hmm. I was under the impression this stuff had a tendency to come beforehand so they come to you instead of to the next town over. It has worked that way in some cases. <laughs> yeah, um, that I know. Uh, you know, um, it's some, some, and and obviously we have some advantages we can offer for this single tax rate um, that other communities don't. Um, but in terms of the timing of the project, um, some of some of these tests come early in the process. Some of them come during construction phase. Uh, it's it, so I, you know, and I can't speak for him. Obviously, he's making the commitment. He's building the hotel. Um, but he's, he's trying to avail himself of every um, financing opportunity. And this is one that the city puts out there as a, as a tool for economic development. So I'm, and he's requested it, so I'm bringing it forward. But obviously it's a policy decision for the city council uh, whether they support that or not. Uh, yeah. um, right on the heels of an override and the stormwater thing coming up. And now we would ask the taxpayers to pay a portion of his tax bill for his business at this point. Is that what we're looking at? The taxpayer, when I look at the city of Northampton, I, look at, I don't look at city hall, I look at the taxpayers. So that would mean that we're going to go up by 2.5% our levy. Plus the amount of Plus the plus amount. New, plus new growth. Plus, plus new, growth. new growth. Yeah, of which this will be part of. Yeah. And so we will have to pick, if we offer a $60,000 abatement or exemption, whatever you want to call it, we would have to pick that up somewhere else in the tax base. It gets absorbed into the rest of the tax base. That's correct. No doubt about it. Yeah. And that's the same, same with all, any of the tests we've ever offered. That's the nature of it. And this one, and there's no guarantee he's going to get anything from the state. Exactly. That's one of the things that, one thing that would always sway me mm -hmm. would be is if he was going to get an enormous uh, bonus from the state, which Coca Cola did. Yep, that's right. Yep. Well, I, I just want to say now that I've had my very, very belated aha moment around how this, how this works. Um, I guess I want to say to Councillor Casey that to me the, um, you know, you say that ta I, I would reframe it as taxpayers picking up the tab. I mean, there's, there is that framing and then there is the framing that it's all of us spreading it out over, you know, our 30, well, however many taxpayers there are, tens of, tens, tens of thousands, and, and, um, and all of us investing together in this economic development that is to our benefit. So I, I mean, I, I feel like 
I, it's, it's worthy, you know, it's a, it's a worthy version of a, of a share in the name of our shared, when, you know, when you say city equals taxpayer, I would say yes, our shared partnership, taxpayer and developer. We have a shared partnership, we all gain from the development. So um, I, I feel like it's something that I can feel very comfortable with. I, I understand it all. It's also the eighty-four thousand dollars worth of uh, additional uh, revenue, meals, and, and hotel. And, um, just sometimes it, what has been deemed as corporate welfare is, can be hard enough to swallow. I, I would agree with you. Although in this case, this is not a faceless corporation. This is, you know. Well, I understand it's got seventeen million dollars tied up right exactly. over here on King Street. Yeah. So that's the other piece of it. So, um, so okay. I have no problem supporting the alcohol license. I mean, that's okay. that's a no-brainer for me. So again, uh, uh, this re uh, our past approach has been that the mayor seeks the co-sponsorship of Ed Lou, and um, but and so it's in your hands to decide whether you want to recommend or co-recommend. Uh, yeah. the, the the comment I would make is that it seems likely to me that this uh, body would have approved it if it were sequenced differently, if it yes. were as an enticement. So you say, oh yeah, that's, that's a good investment um, to make. And I think that instead, the request is to affirm a sense of partnership with an existing uh, business person who uh, uh, is just, just as legitimate an affirmation as the decision would have been. Um, do you mind if we split them? So I'm okay. So I'm moving that um, that Edlu is it co-sponsors co-sponsors uh, the order um, seeking uh, city council approval of the Fairfield Inn and Suites as a certified project within the Constitute Economic Opportunity Area area and a tax increment financing. Second. Okay. Discussion. Uh, I'll second it. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, I didn't say much during the discussion. Um, and and th this has been this is an interesting situation be uh, because I think um, the mayor and I often agree on uh, sort of broadly speaking whether tips should be offered or so on, but sometimes it's agree about the numbers. Um, I I don't feel confident. I don't feel comfortable with this uh, amount. Uh, just back of the envelope numbering looks like a over five years about one hundred sixty five thousand dollars in a, in um, in a tip, roughly speaking. And that's assuming I'm going to guess about an eight or nine million dollar um, value. If it's eleven million. Then also, if we uh, if we do ask for special legislation with a uh, alcohol license, um, that in itself, I mean, those those are hard to get, but they they can be purchased for money. I mean, that in itself is thirty, forty, sometimes fifty thousand uh, dollar comes with a you know, price tag. So one thing you can, I mean, again, if, if it seems like the, uh, the committee's not going to, it sounds like there's not going to be uh, support for this, um, I could ask you to, I could ask if I could uh, indulge you to withdraw the, uh, the request today um, to avoid having a vote on it um, and withdraw it, and I can go back and, uh, and try to re rework something to bring back to you if that's a possibility. Okay. Unless you'd like to take a formal no, vote. No, I just, I yeah. think we have more discussion. Okay, so that's, thank you for the recommendation. No, that's okay. 
be a lot more comfortable with a lesser amount. I mean, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to, to dump elsewhere throughout the community. And I don't want to vote no on it. Uh, I don't want to be a bad partner with the hotel group either. Um, but this is a lot. I know it's only five years, but I'll, I'll stop. Um, do we have a motion to? Uh, I'll make a motion that, that uh, we, we want to withdraw, withdraw. your motion. I would like to withdraw the motion. Can you withdraw your second? Yes. Okay, so, uh, Mr. Mayor, we're. Um, so you could just have an open. We have an open. It's, the floor's open now. Sir, would you like to withdraw your motion? <coughs> I'll withdraw it. I'll withdraw it. I'll take uh, what I've heard under advisement. Um, again, this is a. You know, Ten million dollar project um, in terms of what's being spent here, and uh, so I'll go back and, and try to put something together to bring back forward to you. But thank, thank you. you for your consideration on it. Um, before you go, what about the alcohol? Yeah, let's we split. Them. Look, yeah. Split them. Can I have a motion before just before you go, Mr. Mayor? Sure. Yeah. Have a, can we have a motion? I'd, 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 made, I'd like to move to approve uh, their application for the alcohol license. Can I have a second? Okay. Any discussion on this? This, there's no guarantee in this, right? We have to ask the legislature. They have to. Well, first, it has to be approved by the council and the mayor, and then we send it to the legislature. And they may in their process. They may that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Right. I mean, I, I don't. I also agree with council. I don't know if you said this expressly, but I, the, the, the limits the state places on these things, I think, is arbitrary. last year about conversions and how they interpret it. Mm -hmm. I really think it would be important to state annual all alcohol hotel liquor license. Perfect. Only because yeah. we had to fight about the yeah. conversion situation. That's fine. So I, I would ask for an amendment to specify that annual all alcoholic and eliminate innkeeper and say hotel just to have the correct and we are lucky uh, to have the license. First sentence of section one? Page. It's actually in three, uh, three different places here, everywhere where it says alcohol innkeeper. We would change those to say annual call alcoholic hotel. Okay, uh, can, I, can we get a quick amendment there, Council? Yes. Um, so move. So move. move, 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 move. Try to spell it out. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So back to the main motion as amended. Thank you. Thank you. Move to approve. That's. Actually, we're on the table. So, any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that is uh, co-sponsored with the mayor, and that's going to go forward to the council. Thank you.